it's me again. I want to finish this story about respiration and photosynthesis. So you and I are breaking down sugars to get energy, to keep ourselves alive and functional and do all the things that we can do with that energy. Where did those sugars come from? Think about what you ate today. It either came directly or indirectly from a plant that could both produce its own sugars and break them down through that process of cellular respiration. So we want to look at that critical step. What might be the most important biochemical pathway on this planet, uh, photosynthesis. So to do that, we want to get our bearings, and remember that now we're in plant cells. Plants use their chloroplasts to conduct photosynthesis. And what I've got here is a very large model of a chloroplast. Remember that again, that there might be hundreds of chloroplasts in a single plant cell, and we tend to simplify when we see them in a drawing or a model. So I'm going to remind myself that this chloroplast is one of hundreds, potentially. It's got two plasma membranes around it as well. And if I could open it up and look inside those plasma membranes, what I'd see inside this chloroplast is stacks of flattened discs, and they'd be bright green. These are called the thylakoids. This is the site of photosynthesis in a chloroplast. So we want to think about how this structure, the chloroplast, is going to allow a plant cell to take carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, some water and energy from the sun to make sugars and oxygen. So not only did all the food you ate today come from a plant cell, directly or indirectly, but so too does the oxygen you're breathing right now. This truly is a very critical process for us. So let's start in the thylakoid membrane. These membranes are green. That tells me that's where the pigments are found. So I would find clusters of chlorophyll and maybe some other pigments embedded in these membranes. Solar energy is going to strike those pigments, and guess what? It's going to excite electrons. And we've already thought now about excited electrons and the fact that they contain energy that we might capture to do work. So we're going to have a photon, a, a unit of energy from the sun, strike that chlorophyll molecule. It's going to excite an electron to its active state. And again, rather than want letting that electron fall down to its low energy state, we're going to capture the energy in that electron in a controlled fashion and use it to do work. Again, we're going to do that by utilizing an electron transport chain. So that high energy electron is going to move to an electron transport chain and going to be bounced down that electron transport chain in a series of redox reactions. And guess what we're going to do, use that energy for? We're going to pump protons again, hydrogen ions, and this time we're going to be pumping them into the space defined by that thylakoid membrane. I'm going to open up my thylakoid to get a good view here. So now I can see that these thylakoids, being flattened sacs of membranes, have a discrete membrane-bound space inside them. If I pump protons into that space, they're stuck. And the more protons I pump, the higher the concentration gets in that space. The higher the concentration gets, the more potential energy I have to do work there. So we're going to do work now by letting these protons fall down their concentration gradient through another ATP synthase. So again, we're going to set up an electron transport chain in the thylakoid membrane, use the energy that's released as protons move from a high concentration to a low concentration, to build that really important molecule, ATP. From there, our electron's job is not quite done yet. It might be excited again by another photon of light and hauled off in another electron transporter, very similar in structure, called NADPH. So what we've gotten from this process so far is some ATP and some high energy electrons. While these sound useful to a cell, remember that what we're trying to do here is make sugar. We don't have anything that looks like sugar yet. We've really only done step one of photosynthesis. We just did the light reactions. We converted solar energy 
into chemical energy. In step two, the Calvin cycle, we're going to take that chemical energy and finally build some sugars. So this is going to take place inside the rest of the chloroplast, this fluid surrounding your thylakoids. A series of enzymes are going to first do what's called fixation. They're going to grab a molecule of atmospheric carbon dioxide and they're going to start the process of attaching that carbon to other carbons, investing energy, investing electrons, and eventually producing a sugar molecule. We typically break that process, the Calvin cycle, into three steps and talk about fixation, getting your hands on the carbon dioxide molecule, a reduction, right, feeding all those electrons, those high energy electrons into this complex molecule to make a sugar, and then what's called a regeneration. We need the cycle to be continually operating in the cell. So the cell does have to do some work to get back to where it started in the cycle. So that's step two of photosynthesis. We took that light energy and we used it to make chemical energy in the form of a sugar molecule. The cell might do lots of different things with that sugar molecule. It might send it to a mitochondria and use it to break down uh, that sugar and produce ATP for work. Maybe it stores the sugar molecule. Maybe this is a potato sucking away extra sugars in that underground structure that you and I raid later. Maybe this is a young tree that needs to build some new tissues, build leaves. Again, those are going to be based out of these glucose molecules produced in photosynthesis. So there's two other big ideas I want to leave you with for photosynthesis. The first is that when we're thinking about light reactions and we say a photon of light hits a chlorophyll molecule and excites an electron and that electron leaves the chlorophyll molecule for the electron transport chain, you're now stuck with a very reactive chlorophyll molecule. It's lost an electron. That chlorophyll molecule, in turn, will take an electron from a nearby molecule. The molecule it chooses to take it from is water. And that process produces both protons, we'll leave some protons behind, and we can use some protons, and also oxygen. So that's the stage in photosynthesis that produces the oxygen that over time built up in our atmosphere and allowed organisms like you and I to use oxygen to make energy. So that's one really important contribution that photosynthesis makes to our planet. The second really important contribution that I want to highlight is notice that we're taking CO2 out of the atmosphere, turning it into sugars. We might tie those CO2 molecules up for decades in woody tissue, leafy structures, storage. This feature is what makes plants a carbon sink. On the whole, they remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. As we work collectively to try and understand more about the global carbon cycle, to think more deeply and more accurately about issues of global warming, understanding the role that plants play in this process, both as carbon sources, uh, when they do respiration like you and I, but especially as carbon sinks when they sock away extra carbon. Our understanding of this process becomes increasingly important. So there you have it. There's a quick tour through both respiration done by all eukaryotic cells and photosynthesis done in plant cells and a few photosynthetic prokaryotes. Uh, we'll be back to both of these processes in more detail, but keep reading, keep asking good questions, and I'll see you next time.